Ayo duckies, Andy Lippy here, back with another cheeky video for you. And today we got the shirt on, we got the business shirt on, because we are doing business. This is gonna be a very dry video. That is a disclaimer, a warning, whatever you want to call it. This might blow some minds, but hopefully I'll be able to explain it in such a way that it will help you out massively. So we're going to be talking about JSON and how we can send any commands through OBS WebSocket. This is only for 4.9 because uh, when 5.0 comes out, that's going to be a completely different ball game. But I'll be doing all the coverage here on this channel, so make sure you are subscribed. So we're going to talk about sending all commands. Uh, we're not going to do events, so if something happens or we're not going to do anything like that, we're only going to be sending commands to to change filter settings and basically show you how you can create any OBS WebSocket command. We're going to be using the one and only streamer bot for this video, but this is possible with things like the Orem board using custom packets as well. So it's completely up to you how you want to use it. But for me, I love the way that OBS Raw works in streamer.bot. If you've not checked it out, there's a whole playlist. I'll link it down below. All that jazz. Let's get on with it. Put your rock over the stone. Let's go. Right, this is going to be super dry, so make sure you got your hats on, got a drink, because it's going to take a little while. Let's get into it. So, we're going to be using OBS WebSocket, and we're going to be using the, um, the GitHub page just here, and this is the protocol reference. This is basically all the commands that we can send through WebSocket. Before we start sending some commands, though, I'm going to teach you how to format the JSON so the computer knows exactly what you're talking about, so your commands will get executed, okay? So, to do that, I'm going to be using notepad plus plus which you can see just here and this is just some standard it's just really good for jotting down code there's a lot of different programs out there that you can use that are free as well um but i just use this one because it's the only thing i've got installed at the minute uh so every piece of json we need to start with open curly bracket and end it with close curly bracket Okay, so anything in the middle of here, we don't need anything before it, anything after it at all. It's going to be all the information the computer needs in the middle. And we can type as many spaces as we want in there. We can use the tab button to help format if we want to. And we can do as many different lines as we want. The computer won't read how any blank space in there. So it's up to you how you want to format it so it's easy to read. Because a single line of JSON is not cool. And basically, all that we need to do inside these brackets is for each command, it's going to look a little bit like this. So we're going to use speech marks to open it. We're going to put in command name, close speech marks. Then we're going to do a colon, just a, a, a colon, sorry. I typed in a semicolon there. Uh, and we can do a space because, again, it doesn't matter about the spaces. And then we're going to do open... Uh, speech marks and we're going to type in the information the command needs and then close speech marks just there and that's just a basic command now that would be working but most commands need more than one command in there okay so for instance there's mul multiple things that we'll get into in just a second but anytime you've got more than one kind of line of code like this we need to do a comma at the end of each one apart from the last one. So if I do another enter now and do another line and we'll start adding another command. So speech marks, command name two, speech marks, column, do a space again to help format it and, and easier to read. Uh, speech marks and we'll go more information just here. Speech marks again. And then because this is the last command before this, close bracket we don't need to do any kind of punctuation there at the end that is it that's basically what we're going to be achieving and sending information that would be easily read by the computer and it'll know what's, what's happening right now for websocket except command name doesn't exist for websocket so we need to find out what commands we can use with websocket so on this website the protocol just here we can scroll down all the information of all the commands that we can do are down here so we're not going to be talking about events and things like that today uh, we're going to be using the requests feature so i'm going to click on that go down to requests and you'll read right at the top here 
Requests are sent by the client and require at least the following two fields. So straight away, that's two commands that we need to add in to every single bit of JSON code that we write for WebSocket to understand. And that is the request type. This is the re request type that we want, whether it's um, create a source or start recording, stop recording. That's the request that we're going to be asking WebSocket to do. We also need the message ID just here and pretty much you just need to put the number one in as the, the information there. Uh, but luckily in Streamerbot, you don't have to do that. That's automatically filled out for you because Nate is just a lifesaver. I love it. Um, so let's just build this request type section inside of Notepad++. So I'm going to copy message ID because it always needs to be in this order. So it works from top to bottom. The last one will always be message ID. So I'm just gonna copy that and start from the bottom and work my way up. So in here, we're gonna replace command name with message ID. And the information we're gonna give it, we just type in a number one. That's usually completely fine. That'll just pretty much run it right there. And now we need to do the other bit, which we saw earlier, which is request type just here. So I'm gonna copy this one again. Control C, go over to Notepad++, and I'm gonna replace command name by request type. And then this information is the request that we want to do. So now we need to find what we want WebSocket to do. So if we go back to the website again, and we can start scrolling down here if we want to, or you can go back up to the, the contents and under the request type, we can have a little look at what we want to do. We can do play and pause media if we want to, create sources. One that's really, really simple that I'm gonna to use to start with is start recording. So I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna take us down to the bottom. You see how it says start recording here with the capitalization on the S and the R? That is the request type. That's, that's the type that we're gonna be doing. And you can see here, request field and response items. This basically are all the things that we can add in there. But this is such a basic command, we just need to tell OBS to start recording. That's all we're doing. So I'm just gonna copy this because it has to be the same capitalization. And go back to Notepad++ and we're just gonna paste it directly in there. And now we've made our first little command for OBS WebSocket. So this is going to do the request type of start recording, uh, this message ID here, and because that's the last line, we don't need any punctuation there. That's it. It's good to go. So I'm just going to copy this. And now I'm going to use Streamerbot. This is the beautiful Streamerbot just here. So I've already been messing about with some testing here, so I'm just going to remove it. Uh, let's delete the action. So I've created an action on the left-hand side called OBS Raw JSON Test. To do that, we just press Add give it a name and press OK. So I've got it here and there's no sub action for it to do. Again, you can use this with like Leoran board and everything like that. Um, but I'm going to be using this because I think it's so much easier and cleaner to use when you're doing OBS stuff. So raw, you probably see recordings already here, but I'm just using recording as my example because it's really simple. So we're going to press on raw and it's going to give us a blank sheet like this. So the name, I'm gonna type in start recording because that's the command that we want it to do. And that just makes it easier for us to read in our sub action list if we've got a lot of things in there. I'm just gonna paste the information here. You can always tell that you formatted it right because the command name or the request is gonna be in blue. And then this section is gonna be in like a red color. That means you've kind of formatted it all perfectly and it is going to work. I'm gonna connect this to my OBS just here. And then now we're ready to test it. So if I press test, you're going to see message ID is reserved. And at first I was like, oh, what? This isn't working because we need the message ID anytime that we're using it on any other product like Leoran board at all. But in here, we don't need to. So we can delete this message ID section just there. And then because there's only the request type, we don't need a comma. There's only one command there. So I'm going to delete the comma. Zoom back out and press test. You'll see down in the bottom uh, bottom right just here, we're not currently recording, but if I press test, we're now suddenly recording. 
How crazy is that? So we did that without kind of doing anything. We sent that information wirelessly through WebSocket into there. Well done, you made your first little program. So let's go back to raw, because we can see the result and the status says, yep, that command worked. Well done, you've done it right. Uh, we can see a preview of what it's done as well. And then let's go back to raw. We can actually change this. So I know for a fact that we've got stop recording as an option, but you can check it on the website again. So you can see stop recording. So I can copy that. Remember, it has to be the same format, so the same capitalization and everything like that. And we can paste that back into here in this section because this is the request that we're wanting to happen. And then now when I open up OBS, you can see we're still recording. I'm going to press test. As if by magic, we've now stopped recording. That's it. You've done your first command. And that is really simple to do. You can do that with so many different commands on there. And anything that doesn't have a request field, you only need that one single command. That is it. So now we're going to get a little bit more technical. So we're going to use the protocol again to do a command that's a little bit more complex. We're going to create a source using OBS Raw. Okay, so we're going to scroll down and we're going to go find the request section just here. Keep going down to sources and we're going to do create source. So we're going to click on that. It's going to bring it to the top of the section just here. And as you can see, it's the same formatting. This is the request type that we're going to be doing. And now we've got request fields. So this means we need to feed more information into the JSON script um, for it to know what we want it to do. This is basically just going to create a source wirelessly in OBS without having to press right click, create a source, choose the source. What do you want it to do? This can just do it all automatically for you. So I'm going to copy this. And we're going to add that in to Streamerbot just here. So we're going to change the request type that we had to this time, create source. And this now is important to say the request type and the message ID that's normally there is always at the end of your command. Always the last thing that happens, okay? So it goes request type and then message ID. They are the last things that happen. So you will never need a, um, a, a comma on the last thing. Just remember that, drill it in. Everything else needs a comma. So now we need to feed more information into OBS Raw. So let's have a little look here. We've got source name. So we need to send the source name through the JSON. So the, the source that we're creating has got a name. So I'm gonna copy this. Remember, when you're looking at this, run them in order so you've got this uh, source name then the source kind then the scene name uh, source settings and you can set whether it's visible or not always add them in that order don't mess them around uh, it otherwise you might end up with problems so i'm going to copy this and go back into streamerbot so if you remember anytime we're adding a, a command or a request that we're, we're asking the json to do we do open speech marks paste the command in there close speech marks and then add a colon and then we need to give it some information so when we do that we do open speech and close speech together and inside of there we type what we want it to be called so i'm going to call this source that we're going to make this is a test source create so you can see we're going to make a source called this is a test source create and because we've got more than one command we need to put a comma at the end, okay? And then we can work on the next line. Let's have a little look. Something that I like to do is build the command first. So speech marks, then colon, speech marks. And then that makes it a little bit easier, and comma. And then I can just copy and paste whatever information I want into that section just there. So let's go back to the website. We're gonna add source kind just here. So there's a lot of different source kinds in OBS. I am gonna do a cheat sheet if that's what you guys want. Let me know in the comments of what each source is because you can't just go oh, uh, create a um, media source or something like that. They normally have a specific name. So for instance, source kind, I know for a fact this will make a color source. It's color without the U underscore source. So right now we've got a source name called this is a test source create and the source kind that it's going to be is a color source and then we need some more information because we've got the uh, the comma at the end so i'm going to do an enter what else can we add to this the scene name so now we need to find the scene that we want to add this source to so again speech marks and then colon and then speech marks 
And then we can paste the, the request or the command name in at the beginning, just there. And then we need to get the information just here. So let's go and have a look what scene we're on. We're on scene two. So we can right click if we want to and press rename. And this will allow us to, um, to kind of copy it in there. So press copy. So if your scene name's really long, you don't have to type it in. And then you won't have any uh, errors because obviously it is all dependent on capitalization and formatting it as well. It has to be perfect. Uh, and then a comma at the end, obviously. So right now we've got a little command that is going to create a source, uh, create a color source called this is a test source create on the scene, scene two, done. That is it. Can you believe me? That is it. We've created a little command now. I'm just going to press OK so I can move this out of the way a little bit so we can see what's going on. Move my cam. And then now, when I press test, you will see we're on scene two. Press test. We've created a color source. And guess what it's called? This is a test source create. We've got the results here to say that it all happened OK, everything like that. We got the preview of what's happened and on raw. We could do another one if we want. This is a um, another, we'll call this. This is another test source create. As you can see, I've just added that in there. It's not the same name, so if I press test, that's created another source right now. So now we've got two color sources just in there. It is pretty easy once you get your head around it. Right, let's go advanced mode, shall we? Right, so this is kind of like the third level of how advanced it is because pretty much if you understand what I've told you in this video, you'll be able to format anything uh, that's on this website, um, on the protocol website really easily. So what I'm going to do is go to sources and we're going to actually set the source settings. So we're going to basically manipulate the source settings. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can do in here as well. Um, but I want you to be a bit creative, all right? I'll give you some good examples in some future videos. So if I click on set source settings, it'll look like there's not as much there. So the, we've got the actual uh, request type just here. We've got source name. We can do source type, but it's optional. Um, you don't necessarily need that. As you can see just there and we've also got the source settings which is an object so this is the thing that needs to be formatted slightly different but in the same way okay uh, so let's get having a little play with it so in this um, notepad plus plus I'm gonna format it just here so we've got our um, request type which was going to be set source settings so I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna go in here and paste it just like so and there if you remember are always the last two and we can uh, now start building the command so the source name is the name of the source that we're going to be doing uh, and that again is a string so it's just going to be quotation marks either side so let's do quotation marks um, and then quotes again and co uh, colon and then quote, uh, uh, two quotation marks again and a comma at the end because there's more commands after it so the source name that we're going to be manipulating is the one that we just made in OBS. So that was, uh, this is a test source create. So I'm going to rename this and press copy. So I don't have to basically retype that out because again, it has to be the same formatting of the text, capitalization, everything like that. So we're going to paste that into there. So this is going to latch on to the source. This is a test source create just here. And then we're going to have to manipulate it by changing the settings. And this is where it might get a little bit confusing and tricky and you might run into some problems. So let's go back to the website. We need to just do source settings because that's the name of the command that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to do speech marks, type in that command name, speech marks again, colon. But this time, rather than adding speech marks, we aren't going to do that. We're going to actually have to create another curly bracket. So imagine we're doing like a command within a command now. So that's what that's basically going to be doing. Commandception. So we do open curly brackets and press enter a few times so you can kind of work a little bit different with it. And in fact, I'll give it more of a gap because all the blank space is ignored by the computer. So you can format it to make it as easy as you want. If you don't want the open bracket there, for instance, you bring it here. So it makes it a bit easy. It's completely up to you how you format it. And then a nice little trick I like to do here before we start adding some more is you can press tab so you can indent 
a little bit so you can easily kind of see what you're working with. So we need to change some source settings and they all have their own string as well. And there's a really cool way to find out what settings you can manipulate on here. So if I go to, this is another test source crate. So not the one that we are manipulating. Uh, in fact, no, I'll do the one that we are manipulating. I will change the size of it to, we'll say 800 by 1000. So it's quite a long block now it's completely different let's even change the color of it we'll change it to bright green like so and press ok so we've got a green box and we want to find out the the settings that we can change and it's basically these three settings just here but they might not necessarily be the actual names in the json format in so we need to check that there's a really handy plugin from exceldro called source copy i've done a video on it before so definitely download that i'll leave all the links down in the description we're going to go to scene two because that's what we're on and we're going to go down to this is a test source create i'm going to press save source or we can press copy source so i'll do copy source now because it saves uh, saves me i'm to save it and then reopen it go to notepad plus plus and i'm going to just press new i'm going to paste directly in here as you can see, that is what a single line of data looks like. It's horrible to read. Can you read that? That's what the computer is reading. No. So there's a really cool thing you can do in Notepad++. Hold Control, Alt, Shift, and press M. And that's going to format your JSON just there, uh, which is really, really cool. And then we can read everything here. So the ID, that is your source type just there. So, you know, when we were doing the initial command, when we were creating the source, uh, is it in here? Here it is. We used color underscore source. That's where we got that information from. So if you don't know what source type is, you can just l open up the JSON using the source copy and then read it from there. But we're messing about with settings. You can see here, it's formatted like we've done it now. So we've got the open bracket and the close bracket at the end, um, which aren't visible at the moment, and that's why it's probably unhappy. And then at settings, we've got an open bracket again and a close bracket at the end as well. So these are the three settings we're going to be changing. Color, height, and width. Okay? So we go to our previous setting just here. And just like we were doing before, we need to do speech marks colon and then speech marks again right this is future me talking i've done a booby with it all right i put i put quotation marks when i'm using numbers all right I, I i work it out in the end but just just ignore me about quotation when you're using figures all right just 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 listen learn and yeah watch me just fail and we're gonna be changing three settings so we need to do this three times we do a comma at the end because there's more than one we do speech marks colon speech marks and then a comma and then the third one's the last one speech marks colon speech marks and then no no comma because that's the last command that's in this command yeah if that makes sense imagine that's your full stop imagine the close brackets your full stop that's the end of your sentence it's gone super bright um so let's have a look at the three we're going to be doing color height and width Okay, so if you're UK, there's no U in there. You need to remember that. And that's usually the same with coding all the time. So we've got color, we've got height, and we've got width. And this is where we can put whatever integers we want. So the color integer is an RGBA decimal color, just for anybody that wants to know. Thank you, Exceldro, for, for telling me that. Uh, so if you, you can use converters online if you want to, to change the color. I'm going to leave the color exactly the same. We can change the height and the width though. So right now it's on 1,800. So I'm just gonna copy this color code and I'm gonna paste it directly into color. I'm gonna use the height and I'm gonna do the height of 200 and then the width by 1,000. So kind of flipping uh, the source on its side a little bit. And that's it, we've built it. But this is where you might forget to do something. Because if you remember, we created the command source settings. Even though we've used these brackets, we need to tell the computer that there's more commands after it. So that's right, we need to put a comma in there. That is going to tell the computer, right, run the next one, run the next one. Oh, this is the last one, end. Okay? So now I can copy this whole entire thing and bang it straight into Streamerbot. So I'm going to delete all this. 
and paste it in there. And if you remember, if you're using streamer bot, you can delete message ID as well. That's completely fine. And the last comma, because obviously that's the last command now. And then now when we press test, I'll zoom out. So I just did the newbiest thing and then ran to Waldo and Nate and I was like, I've been dumb dumb. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I said it pretty much, I'm pretty much sure I said it earlier in the video because these are not strings, these are numbers, these are integers. They do not need the speech marks. <laughs> so you probably see now they've gone green. Um, this is this is the tricky thing. I'm new to this as well, guys, all right? So you're learning from a dum-dum. So hopefully it'll be all right. So forget uh, when you are seeing just plain numbers in there, don't be using just like don't be using any of the speech marks only use that for if it's a string okay that is all you need to do remember that i'm so dumb you guys using the orange board will already know this and i should have known it but look i've not had enough coffee so just get on with it so now when i press test we'll be able to see we got a green box there we got all the info saying it's been made and everything like that. I can adjust the size so I can do a thousand by a thousand if I want to test. And we can change the size of the command just there. So as I said before, it's, it was even right in front of me here. On, on, it was even right in front of me. And I don't know why I missed it. Sometimes you just do. So this is the whole command for it. You can see that we've done it right now because it's formatted completely different. Integers that you're sending through WebSocket do not need quotation marks, okay? I can't believe I've done, I can't believe you've done this. That's what happens when you spend so long making videos and everything like that. So hopefully you have learned something. If you want to see even more about Jason and stuff like that, please let me know because I'm learning more and more as the day goes on and I'm enjoying sharing the knowledge with you. Um, so please just let me know if you do want it. As always, these videos take me a long time to do so. Please consider joining Patreon or the YouTube channel members to help me out. Or send me a coffee because apparently I need it. Because whatever's just happened in this video, all right? Put your rock with a stone. And I'll see you next time. Much love. I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons that help make this content full time, make it free for you guys. And also a huge thanks to all my YouTube members. You, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me and the community. Keep it up, guys.